Hey everybody, welcome back to Prepper Junkie. Today on the table we have another Radical Firearms. Let's check this one out. If you're going to carry a gun, you need a great holster. I personally use betterholsters.com for my concealed carry, for my out the waistband carry, and I use their gun belt also. They have over 450 models in stock, 50 different colors, 100% made in the US of A, 30 day money back guarantee, and a lifetime warranty. What more could you ask for? Check out betterholsters.com. All right, folks, as I said, we have another Radical Firearm on the table right here. Uh, this will be the third one that I have reviewed from Radical Firearms. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get it started. All right, folks, Radical Firearms are known for making some very good budget AR-15s. You can pick uh, it, you know, pick up rifles from from pretty cheap. So especially if you can catch them on sale. So let's go ahead and start out with this one. This has a B5 Systems stock on the back here, so it's already got some upgraded furniture, which is really nice. It does have some cutie sling attachments on the other side and some OG sling attachments right here. Nice rubber butt pad on the bottom. It does have a larger cheek weld right here, which is really nice to get comfortable on of there. I just realized I left my dot on, and uh, okay. And it obviously is adjustable. You have a mil spec buffer tube right here. Now coming down to the castle nut. Now I think this might be the third one in a row that I've reviewed that has not been staked. I don't know why Radical Firearms is not staking them. I don't know if it's deliberate, QCMIS, I don't know. Um, but I do want to see the castle nut staked. So, I mean, yes, I can do it, but it really should be coming directly staked in my opinion. Okay, now moving along, we do have an M4 charging handle right here. Obviously it's not ambidextrous or anything like that. And you have the upper and lower receiver, 70, 70, 75T6 aluminum. And then you have everything as standard here. You have your brass deflector, you have your dust cover, you have your brat, excuse me, you have your forward assist. And the nice thing on this one, it actually comes with the A and B safety. In my opinion, AR-15 should all have ambi safeties. They're super convenient um, and I'm a huge, huge fan of them. Uh, you do have your standard mag release right here on the other side. Again, you have your bolt catch and release and your other safety is right there. Moving down, um, the upgraded furniture again. So you do have a B5 Systems grip right here. I really like the angle of it. It's not rubber over mold, but it does have some aggressive texturing on it there. Could do some uh, texturing on the back, in my opinion. It's on the front and on the sides. Would have liked to see maybe a little bit on there just to give me a little bit of purchase. But um, again, it's a nice upgrade over the standard uh, furniture that ARs typically come with. Okay, now moving down, we have a straight trigger guard and then we have the trigger. I'm gonna take the mag out off camera because I don't know if I'll get dinged off of Google or not, so, ah, oh, like magic, it's gone. All right, so let's check out the trigger. It's just gonna be a mil spec trigger. It's gonna be nothing to write home about, although this one does work compared to the last gun I reviewed where I had issues with the trigger and I had to replace it. Um, check the video out. So you got a little bit of take up, almost minimum, 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 <laughs> almost absolutely no take up, and then you've got the brake. You got a little bit of let out, and you heard that thunk there. So you've got pretty tactile and audible break right there. It's a mil spec trigger. It is what it is, but it does work just fine. Obviously, the EOTech does not come with this gun, um, but you do have a 1913 pick reel on the top of the receiver that goes the full length of the rail right here. Now let's do the wiggle test. I always like to do this. If it doesn't affect the gun in any kind of way. It's just something I just like to do. I don't like wiggle between play between my upper and lower. It just kind of annoys me. Um, but it, again, it does not affect the gun in any kind of way. Absolutely no wiggle between the upper and lower receiver. Good job, Radical Firearms, because I really do hate that. All right, so moving up, we have quite a beefy handguard on this one, right? Um, 
I can still get a good C clamp on it unless I move a little further up when it kind of turns into a quad rail up here. We'll go over that in just a sec. But um, it's a little thicker than your standard hand guard. And you'll be able to see that when you actually look down here, you can see that it sticks out a little further from the upper receiver than maybe some other um, hand guards that maybe contour more in. But as it stands, it's decent hand guard. And as I said, it does have the full length 1913 reel. It's been cut out on the top on the sides here and it's got M lock slots at the three, six and nine position. And again, more aggressive cutouts to keep the rail a little lighter and keep it a little cooler when you are firing. Now, as I mentioned, when you get to the top here, it kind of turns into a quad rail. Um, so let's see if I can get this on camera. I'll probably roll in a different footage for you. But it, so it, there's no rails here. It's got the M lock slots and then it kind of comes out and then you've got 1913 pick rails. This is great if you want to add lights. You don't have to add M lock slots or anything like that. Excuse me, um, Picatinny mounts to uh, extra Picatinny mounts to attach your lights and stuff. It's got that on there. So if you want to add I don't know, tripod, lights, lasers, D-balls, whatever you may want. It's giving you that rail space at the end there to do that. And it does have QD sling mounts at either end of this handguard. Also, at the very front here, you have your birdcage, your two birdcage, they work great. Below the handguard, we have a mid-length gas system. I do like mid-lengths, they are my favorite for an AR-15, unless I can get my rifle length. But for a 16 inch barrel, the mid-length is a fantastic length for a gas system. Um, I do prefer over carbine length. It just helps smooth out the gun a little bit, um, and I am a big fan. So 16 inch barrel, one and seven twist barrel under here it is chambered in 5.56, so you can shoot both 5.56 and 223 out of the gun. Now one thing I wanted to mention when I picked this gun up, because it actually refers to the rail, when I picked the gun up from um, the gun shop and I ordered it in and I did the transfer. So I was picked up and I was just looking at inspecting it and I could hear this rattling noise. I'm like, what the heck is that? Um, now you can't hear the rattling noise anymore, but essentially I was rattling, I was like, and then I heard something fall to the ground. And I was like, what is that? So I picked it up. It was one of the screws to the handguard right here. I, remember, I think it was whatever one it was. I think it was this one, whatever. One of the handguard, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me because in my previous uh, video, uh, previous review of the uh, radical I did, um, I had problems with the trigger and then um, went straight out of the box, the screw fell out and I was like, okay, I said, hopefully this is not going where I think it's gonna go. Fortunately, that was the only thing that I had an issue with during this review. Um, but just be aware, it doesn't seem like Radical Firearms quality control is on top of things because that's two out of three guns I've had, I've had minor issues with. Easy to fix, yes, but you really shouldn't have to be doing that right out of the box. Okay, so let's go ahead and take out the charging handle because one of the things I like to do is inspect the charging handle, make sure everything looks okay, make sure that the staking looks good. Uh, let's check out the staking on this. One side staking looks pretty, but both sides are pretty good. The staking's not too bad. Um, I wish they would stake the castle nut, but the staking's not bad on this. Um, everything else looks pretty good. There's no like, um, there's nothing that looks out of place on here. Everything looks a-okay. All right, so let's talk about shooting this. So I already said just a second ago, I haven't had any problems with it other than that screw coming out right out of the box, so obviously it wasn't tightened down properly. Uh, other than that, I really haven't had any problems whatsoever. Um, about 300 rounds through it, which is my standard typical um, initiation for first impression guns um, when I get it. I'm about, I always put about 300 rounds through it. So yep, no problems uh, whatsoever, which is as I say, it's good to hear. Um, and it, you know, it feels like a mid-length, it's, it's flat shooting. Um, yeah, no problems uh, whatsoever for me. So these guns are going to cost you anywhere from like $400 to $600. Depends if you can catch them on sale or not, you know, whatever you can find. So at that price point, yes, they're, they're, they seem to be very good value for money, but their quality control, as I said, seems to be lacking a little bit. So when you get your firearm, please make sure you inspect it. Make sure your screws are tightened down. Make sure things are staked properly. Um, just, you know, as a, as a user of the firearm, you should be, you know, you should know everything about it before you really start shooting it. So just please just double check yourself. Because um, other than that, as I say, Radical Firearms, you know, they put out a lot of uh, decent firearms at a very, very reasonable price. So anyway, uh, that is pretty much it for me. If you guys have any questions, any comments, please ask them below. I'm always happy to help out wherever I can. And that's it. Until next time, I'll catch you later.